problem solving was one of MCC's learning outcomes when educational research in problem solving was trending and this was in the early 2000s and I didn't hesitate to jump in um, by helping my students to unpack problem solving with labels like given, required, solution because this was the way that I was trained as an undergraduate mechanical engineering major and I thought that if that was a su uh, successful for me that it would succeed for my students but I failed miserably my students didn't fail I failed them and so that was my initial effort in assessment so I wondered why this strategy worked so well for me but failed for my students and after multiple iterations with no evidence of desired outcomes on my part, then unfortunately I adopted a deficit perspective in student learning. And although I failed often, the improvement that I should have really been doing and the improvement that I sought uh, unfortunately gave rise to implicit bias. So instead of focusing on my students' strengths for the assessment, I was really focusing on their deficits in learning. So fortunately, my experiences and research informed my ongoing efforts and transformed my practice. So we, that is my collaborating colleagues, which there have been many, um, over these years and my students and I, we've had small wins, right? So how do I know this? Well, there's the traditional increase in my retention and success rates. But what's more important is that students right, from the past have come back and have told me that they've been able to apply their learning in different contexts. So what have I learned? Well, for my students, I've learned that incremental changes in learning are not readily evident and that students, they want continuity and connection that requires me as an instructor to really thoughtfully, right, tightly couple the assessment tools that I use. Students also are inspired by authenticity and genuineness. They want to know that you're okay with them failing early and failing often. Students do really appreciate our learning partnerships, especially really sincere learning partnerships based on trust. So I've also then learned to be transparent with my students about the assessments and about my experimentation. I think that that also gives them the freedom to experiment with their learning in my classes. So I'd like to briefly introduce you to my future efforts toward a um, more holistic assessment system. So. Uh, what you are seeing here is the uh, final phase of a, a design summary, basically, from a dissertation that was uh, defended in 2014 by Daniel Reinholz um, at Berkeley. Basically, what he did is he used peer review and self-reflection as means for explanations to enhance learning in calculus. Also in terms of the journal that I do with the self-assessment, he also does that in class. Um, and this is the reason, and this is huge in terms of what was very much lacking in my work. And that is when he does this in class, he's able to actually train the students 
to provide effective feedback and how do you um, analyze and assess effective feedback? How do you learn from effective feedback? Also in terms of reflections, how do you reflect? What, I mean, what are you thinking about and how is it that you explain these thoughts? So I'm really very excited about this coming year and being able to implement this and so I hope I can report out in the future.